Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. On this channel, we're all about making and baking and doing a whole lot of quilting and sewing. And if that sounds like something that's fun or interesting to you, then stick around. I hope you'll enjoy today's video and be sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell before you uh, leave today. YouTube is challenging. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Sometimes you get notifications, sometimes you don't. If you want to always know what I'm publishing each week, then I encourage you to jump onto my email list, which is a private email list. I will share all of my crafty updates with you so you never miss anything. And if you are one of my lovely and wonderful returning viewers, thank you so much. I totally appreciate you and I'm always grateful that you're here and that you tune in and that you participate in all of the videos. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the point of today's video. The point of today's video is that I want to give you uh, an overview of what I have planned for the holiday season coming up. I thought it would be fun to check in, let you know kind of what I have in mind, what I'm dreaming up for you, what's coming, so that if you see some things that are interesting to you, then you can go ahead and get your supplies ready and you'll be ready to go when the video publishes. I will also run through some of the new fabric that I've picked up for Christmas sewing. If you watched my recent video on how I organize some of my sewing supplies, You'll know that I kind of promised to sew from stash. <laughs> that did not last long. <laughs> I came up with a project idea for something really specific and I needed specific colors for it to work. I couldn't just sew it from stash. I didn't have all those colors. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, and then I did need the Christmas fabric. And while I was there, I just grabbed a couple of other things. So we'll talk about that when I get to it. But first, let's talk about upcoming makes and um, some of these things you probably won't have in your stash. And if they sound interesting to you, you'll want to go ahead and get them so that when I publish my version of the video, you'll be ready to go. The first thing that I would like to talk about is uh, McCall's pattern number 5778. This is what it looks like. And I have... Um, personally made the large Christmas tree. I have not shown you that on the channel. We'll look at that when the video comes up. Over the summer, I did a Christmas in July video. I sewed the smaller Christmas tree that came from my vintage pattern. And what's interesting is that when I filmed the video, I checked online to make sure that the pattern was available and there were tons of them. Um, now, not so much. I had a viewer who contacted me to let me know that she couldn't find it, so I, I don't know if it's available anymore, but this McCall's pattern is still in the stores, so you can still get a hold of this. And we will be sewing the small Christmas tree, so be looking for that. It is a little different from the vintage pattern that I shared this summer. It's kind of the same, but it's different, you know, um, but we'll be making that little tree. And then we'll also be making a couple of Christmas stockings. I'm going to have my own twist on the stocking because I feel like there's already 101,000 Christmas stocking videos on YouTube and I try to make things that are just a little bit different for you so you're not just watching the same project over and over again. Because honestly, if you can already watch somebody else's video that's made, why would you watch mine? <laughs> so let me show you what I have in mind. To make the Christmas stockings that I have planned for you, uh, you'll either want uh, a jelly rolls or you will want to uh, have your quilting rollers and rotary blades ready to go. And we will cut strips and make our, uh, our own fabric to make our uh, stocking. So what we'll do is we'll basically sew our own fabric and cut the stocking from, from that. And I wound up using flannel for mine because it's really soft and I have a bunch of it in stash and I wanted to, to use stash where I could. Um, it is stabilized and when I make the actual video we'll talk about that. Uh, this one I used also as a swatch for my uh, walking foot and if you want to learn more about the walking foot before we jump into the videos for Christmas I did just release a new tutorial on that and I will link to it. I highly recommend 
getting your walking foot ready because we're going to use it. And you can see all of the fun that you can have with a walking foot. So it's kind of a simulation on a free motion quilt. It's not, but it's not just doing your standard straight line quilting. So get ready for that. We'll play with that. And stockings generally will have like a, a, a fuzzy top to them or some kind of other top. And um, I'm going to attempt faux fur. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of hopeful about it. I think it's going to be cute. I mean, look at how that goes. I mean, isn't that cute? And I'll just tell you right now, it's going to be a glue gun project because uh, sewing a faux fur, that is a whole other thing. And, um, you know, I want this to be a really easy stocking. So we're just going to have a little fun with the glue gun. Uh, if you don't have any of this in stash, make sure that when you get your faux fur that the uh, shades of the fur match the, uh, the print. I have a couple of items of faux fur in my stash and the other one was more of a brown warm tone and I love that particular look of the fur, but it didn't work well with my bears. Uh, so I found this one in my super deep stash. I've had this like 20 years, I'm not kidding. Pro well, probably longer probably closer to 25 or 30. But it's good as new and we're going to make a stocking with that. And then we'll make another stocking with a different topper. And if you want to see that, you'll just have to make sure that you're subscribed and the, the notification bell is clicked and you see all the videos. <laughs> okay, stockings. Stockings and Christmas trees. Okay, get that pattern. The next item that I would like to make uh, for the Christmas season, uh, they're called prayer quilts. And I saw this on the Shabby Fabrics channel and I just loved them. I thought they were so sweet. And she has a tutorial on how to put them together. And I like them because they're four patches. And you know how I feel about the four patch. I love them. It's a small, tiny little four patch, but it's still a four patch. What Shabby has is a kit. And in the kit, you get these um, little um, gold, gold crosses. They go inside of the prayer quilt. You get these really pretty gold uh, safety pins and then it comes pre um, printed with a prayer and what you do is you uh, attach the prayer to the prayer quilt which is nice if you're going to give it as a gift so uh, if you were uh, gift giving to somebody you could actually make a little prayer quilt and put that uh, tie it to the top of your gift as like a tag or in lieu of a tag it's really nice these are available on the Shabby Fabrics website. If you are interested in doing a sew along on the little prayer quilts, then um, go ahead and get the little kit. It's very sweet and I'm really looking forward to making these. So what is Christmas sewing without talking about gift ideas? And most all of us have young people or children in our lives and it's nice to gift them with a really sweet handmade gift, I think handmade present. I'm sure that most all of us have young people or children in our lives and I think it's always nice to include a really sweet handmade gift for them. And something I want to show you is, this is kind of an old school thing, but it's going to be sewing from what they call a panel fabric. This is called the Meow Meow panel and there's also a Woof Woof panel. And what's really cute about this is you get uh, a mama cat, a daddy cat, and four little kittens. And on the dog, the woof woof panel, you get a mama dog, a daddy dog, and four puppies. And they're adorable. I will tell you that when I do my version of this project, I'm going to uh, stabilize. Because there were some issues with them being just a little too floppy because the fabric is very soft. It's beautiful fabric. I think it's a moda. Yes, it is. So it's, I don't know how to say her name, Stacy Stacy Sue from Moda. So modafabrics.com, it's gorgeous. I had to really search to find this. I found it on pineapplefabrics.com. Hopefully she still has some. I don't know if they're being reprinted or what's going on, but uh, if you would like to uh, sew this, I think it's darling. And just to give you a heads up, these little, um, the little kittens and the puppies, I mean, you could make just the kittens and puppies and put them in a stocking, which I think would be absolutely precious. So you don't have to just pair the kittens with the larger pillows. You could actually get several little gift ideas out of this. So that's coming. 
I love sewing little zippered bags and I have been wanting to get tutorials on the channel for you making these really fun little bags and I'm finally going to put one up for you because I think that it's a really great little Christmas gift. Here's one that I made. The, I will tell you this this is a little small. I went with a larger size for what we're going to use on the channel but just to give you an idea this is what it's going to look like. So it's just a cute little zippered pouch. It's lined and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not bad and I just used uh, regular quilting cotton. This is ch some cheap stuff I literally got at Walmart. I just self quilted it and we'll do that on the channel. That's another walking foot project so you are going to want to obtain that walking foot and get comfortable with it. We'll get lots of practice with it on these Christmas projects but this adorable little zippered pouch is coming and I will have a printable pattern for you on my website so that's coming up. Um, for this one you would want to have just plenty of quilting cotton in your choice, the little zippers, and you will want uh, quilt batting. And I just used the regular 80-20 quilt batting for this. I mentioned earlier about uh, the, the faux fur coming from the deep stash. Not to be confused with the deep state. <laughs> Completely different. The deep stash. So this is stash that I've had uh, like going back to late 80s, early 90s. Uh, so it's been around for a long time and uh, I found it when I started uh, sewing again a couple of years back and um, I knew I had some Christmas things out there and I decided that okay this is the year we're going to go out and see what's out there and cut into some of that now and I'll show you what we're going to use. I have over two yards of this and it's pre-quilted and look at this. Isn't that cute? It's beautiful. Okay, it is gorgeous. It is just <laughs> the quality of the older fabrics. I cannot stress to you how beautiful it is. And I've been holding on to it, but we're going to cut into it this year. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use uh, the uh, pre-quilted in a Christmas stocking project. And also I'm going to make those placemats again. I shared placemats with you this summer where we did quilt binding. We're going to do those again. And I can't wait because this is going to be really pretty on the table. So we'll do a set with the uh, quilted Christmas placemats and updated uh, napkins, cloth napkins. So if you want to practice doing those mitered corners, this will be a great time to do it. And uh, it's going to be really pretty. It'll look beautiful on your table. I do hope that you'll have family over. I know that for some of my California viewers, uh, <laughs> Christmas is not looking all that merry and bright for you. So I am so sorry. I want you to know that I um, really... Um, praying for you daily. I have friends out there. I have a lot of viewers out there and uh, I know it's hard and uh, you are not, you're not forgotten by the rest of us. That's, that's all I can say. So when I found that uh, pre-quilted fabric in my deep stash, I was like, I wonder if I can find anything else about it. So I wound up looking it up and what I learned from reading the uh, salvage edge on that fabric was that uh, it was by Leslie Beck. So I searched Leslie Beck <laughs> online and I found a bunch of stuff. Uh, it was all on Etsy and eBay and I found a beautiful panel print. It's gorgeous. And we're going to make this for the door. Isn't that pretty? And then on the back, it's got another one that's like a wall quilt. So maybe we'll make that one next year. But for this year, we're going to do the smaller um, wall hanging and we're going to put it on the door. It'll be like a door quilt. So stay tuned for that. If you can find panel prints, grab a couple because they're, they're really beautiful. This one is called uh, Tis the Season by Leslie Beck. And... Um, there are several sellers on Etsy that have these in stock and I mean it's beautiful. Color in this fabric is an exact match to the color on my pre-quilted fabric that I had in my deep stash. So the older stuff really wears well. And you know while I was um, 
nosing around, I found this. And I, if you're one of the older viewers on the channel, you'll remember these. I remember them clearly when everybody wore those little um, holiday vests and they were big at Christmas. It's kind of pre-ugly Christmas sweater, but we never thought of our Christmas sweaters as being ugly. You know, that's kind of a new thing. This is like a, a vest and I, I don't know that I'm gonna necessarily like make it as a vest, but um, it has beautiful uh, panels and I thought, you know, I could do applique or something. So I don't know that I'll sew it uh, this season, but I have it and we'll just see where that goes. But for what I can tell you for sure is the pre-quilted Christmas is going to get sewn and uh, that wall uh, small wall quilt is going to get made. So if you can find a panel print in Christmas fabric that you like, go ahead and grab that and we can sew those together. And I'll show you how I uh, figured out a super easy way to uh, craft a small um, sleeve where you can hang your wall hangings and uh, we'll get into that. I'm looking at my list so that I don't miss anything and I will tell you that I am going to try out doing a live sew along with you. I've never done anything like that. I don't know how it's going to go but I'm going to try it and I currently have it scheduled for uh, Saturday, December the 12th and what I would like to do is to get together and sew the Christmas tree napkins and that was also a project I did for Christmas in July. I love those. I hope that you love them as well. And we could do a live sew along of those together, which I think would be fun. I would say that I will be playing Christmas music, but I can't play Christmas music because if I do, uh, I will get what's called a copyright strike from YouTube, which is a very serious thing and I could lose my channel. So you play Christmas music where you are and I'll just sew in silence. So we'll do the live sew along. I've also got on here that I'm going to share a cookie recipe with you. I haven't been doing a lot of recipes and uh, I know a lot of people signed up to follow me for recipe content and I'm sorry I haven't been adding those in, uh, but most people seem to be following along for the quilting and sewing and so that's what I'm doubling down on at this point. But I thought it would be fun to bake Christmas cookies and I have that scheduled for the 19th. I don't know if I'm going to do that live. I probably won't do that live. Um, to be honest, I don't like the quality of my live videos. The picture quality is not where I want it to be. So I don't do a lot of those for that reason. Okay, and then I have on my list that I want to do like a holiday vlog with you. So I'll probably like go out and look at Christmas lights. Maybe we'll go to the nursery or something, the plant nursery and look at Christmas trees, you know, that type of thing. Something light and enjoyable. That's what I have in mind. The last thing on the list that I will share with you today is right after Christmas, I'm planning a Harry Potter inspired project. So uh, after Christmas is over, that first weekend following Christmas, they always do, I think it's on family, well, they don't call it family channel anymore. I don't know what they call it. Back in the uh, days of Yorn, I used to work in uh, television production and we did, um, ad spots for a lot of the local channels. One of them was Family Channel anyway, but they're not Family Channel anymore. They're like the anti-Family Channel at this point. Anyway, whatever the channel is, they run Harry Potter all weekend. And I think maybe a couple of them do it. But it's like just Harry Potter movies, morning, noon, and night, one after the other, blah, blah, blah. So I thought it would be fun while that's going on to publish a really cute Harry Potter uh, quilt project. And I'm going to design it so that it's on the small side and you could use it as a wall hanging. So it'd be really cute in uh, like your child's bedroom or if you have a student returning to campus, they could hang it in their campus room, um, that type of thing. So um, let me show you what I picked up. I had to change the battery. <laughs> okay, so if this looks different or something, I'm, that's, that's why. The batteries don't last long. Okay, so the last project that I want to talk with you about today is the Harry Potter uh, small quilt that I have coming up, or quilt style project. I don't really know what to call it. We'll just say it's, it's a Harry Potter inspired thing. Um, so unless you have specific colors and items in your stash, you'll, you'll probably need to go get a few things. 
And so what I'm going to do is just kind of show you what I have. I'm going to do another video where I talk with you about my most recent Joanne haul to get ready for the Christmas season. So if you want to see a little more about that, you'll have to check out that video. But in today's video, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek. So here's what I did. I tried to do a mix of solids and prints because uh, I just thought it could get a little dull if it was all solid. So I wound up going um, for my Slytherin and Ravenclaw. I picked a gray that had this little tree on it and I thought that was kind of fun. It is directional, so I'll have to be careful how I cut. Um, but I thought those would work really well. And then it's not like excessively busy. And I think those would be really pretty to represent those houses. For Hufflepuff, and Gryffindor, this is what I picked up. Uh, so the Gryffindor will be the burgundy with this yellow and then the Hufflepuff will be this yellow with the stars. And I opted, I considered doing a solid black and then I thought that's not very Hufflepuffy because I'm a Hufflepuff and uh, I, I know all about being Hufflepuff and the stars <laughs> really worked better. So. Uh, I did opt for the black with the stars, so that's going to be what goes with that. And for these, uh, all of this part of the project, I got half a yard of each, uh, each cut. So that will be plenty. And um, you will want something for the sashing, you'll need something for the binding, and you'll need something for the back panel. And I went ahead and went with this um, beautiful uh, cathedral looking uh, glass to do the the back panel so the whoops so the back of the quilt is going to be in this I mean just pick what you like honestly but I, I really liked this one and uh, I'm gonna put that on the backing and it's kind of a large print so it will have space on the back of the quilt to show up and uh, it may also wind up being the sashing. I haven't decided yet. I won't know. There's enough here. This one I wound up getting a full yard. Yeah, a full yard. So I should have enough here that I could cut uh, for the sashing as well. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm doing for the binding yet. The binding might be um, a solid. If I had enough, I would love to do this as my binding. I think that would be really pretty. So uh, I think there'll be plenty for that. So I did uh, half yard cuts on all of the uh, house colors and um, a full yard on what I wanna do for the backing panel. So um, you'll need to plan ahead a little bit. And you know, if you have a person in your home that loves Harry Potter, uh, you know, maybe let them help you pick out because if they're a particular house, they might want something a little more special than just, the, you know, the more plain that I selected for this part. Um, I, I, I'm not Slytherin, so I don't know. Uh, but they, you know, maybe there's something that's more snake-like that they would really enjoy. So, um, or you could just completely surprise them. So that's what I did. So uh, as far as the quilt top goes, the two prints that will be on there will be um, the stars and the trees. And I think that's gonna be nice. So that's coming. Um, I'm going to use that braid pattern because you know I made that braid video and I think a lot of you found me via the braid video and I haven't done a project using them. So um, get ready. We will be uh, cutting our strips and piecing our braids and making that really fun quilt top. So I'm psyched about that and I think you'll enjoy it. I hope that gives you a sort of a heads up and a good clue about what I've got planned for you as far as Christmas makes and projects uh, coming up. And I think that there will be uh, enough variety in there for you to make uh, fun gifts for people. I think it will get you into the spirit and take your mind off of uh, the stress <laughs> that is 2020, the gift that just keeps on giving. And I encourage you to dig through your deep stash and see if you have some old beloved fabric that you've been saving and saving and saving. I, I can't think of a better time than 2020 to go ahead and cut into that stuff and use it. 
And you might really enjoy a little bit of a scavenger hunt for vintage stuff on Etsy and eBay. It's a great way to take your mind off of things and you won't have to spend a lot of money. So that's what I have for you. And uh, coming up, I will have a video for you on my most recent little trip to Joanne and I'll show you the things that I picked up to sort of get myself um, stocked and supplied ahead of the season and if I can't go anywhere for a while because who knows what's going to go on I mean you know this you never know this year you don't know from one week to the next what's going to go on so uh, I have kind of taken to stocking ahead and planning ahead <laughs> as best I can that is today's video I appreciate you watching if you have any questions drop them below um, and share with all of us what kind of holiday sewing plans you might have. I should also tell you, before I forget, there's a felt crafting project in there as well. I forgot to mention that. That's really it. I'm gonna just uh, say um, peace out and much love to you and blessings to all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.